Thank you very much for coming, taking the time. Uh, we really appreciate you're here. I hope you have a good lunch. Uh, the topic that we're gonna t uh, that we're gonna tackle today is quite important. So hopefully you get all your uh, questions answered, and we're gonna have a, an expert here talking about it. So don't be afraid to shoot. She'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, with nothing more to say, I'll pass you to Sandra. Okay, thanks. Mic to myself here for. We're live streaming this, so uh, Michelle, if you notice, I've got uh, Caesar salad in my teeth or something. Please tell me. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm an expert on uh, this particular legislation, but um, I'm not sure anybody really wants to say that they are, and that's been our challenge: is to find somebody. So I can tell you that we've that we've spent several months reviewing this legislation. We've had uh, meetings with uh, CRTC, Industry Canada, discussions and so on as we prepare our own organization for this legislation, uh, which is coming into effect very quickly next week, as a matter of fact, on July the 1st. How many of you are familiar with CASEL? At all? Anything? Heard a little bit. Uh, heard a little bit? Any of you attended any of the CRTC webinars, been on the Fight Spam site, any of that? Okay, well, uh, I'm going to share some of that with you today. And uh, this is actually this first piece that I have, and I'm going to be jumping back and forth to a couple of different things, um, is the, actually the CRTC presentation, which uh, which they post on their site and, and that they've also uh, sent to us to use. So I'm not going to go over every slide. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of pieces of the legislation which I'm not sure will apply to everybody. So I'm going to kind of ask that as it comes up and see if that is something that you want to talk about or we can, can move on to more pertinent topics. Uh, the legislation itself is readily available to you on the um, fightspam.gc.ca website. So you can go on there and there is a full section for businesses and time permitting we, we may go on there today just to do a quick walkthrough of what's available. Um, this is the legislation. Uh, and so you can see there's a fair amount of, of information here. The whole point behind this legislation is to uh, fight spam. Uh, although you, you know, personally, you may look at some of this and and wonder if this is all spam. But but that is the point of it is to to avoid having as much spam uh, as we do. So this is. Uh, oops, sorry. It's kind of hard for me to see here. Um, going to work. Uh, th we've not done the live stream before, so it's a bit of a new thing for us. And oh, that's why I'm having a problem. We put the cables on the mouse. Uh, let's see if this is going to move. It may have frozen on me. Um, yeah, my presentation's frozen. <laughs> so that's going to make it difficult. Let's see, maybe if I go out and come back in. This is the PowerPoint that was sent to us. It's a PDF because we don't want people changing it. Um, okay, there we go. That's going to work. So we've had it up for a while. I guess it just kind of decided to go to sleep. Uh, so anyway, this presentation was prepared by the commission staff and they've got their disclaimer here. It's not to be considered legal advice nor is it binding to the commission. Uh, it doesn't reflect an interpretation of CASEL or its accompanying regulations by the Office of the Privacy Commissioner, the Competition Bureau or Industry Candidate. So that that's kind of where it, creates a bit of an issue because it's hard to actually get 
uh, somebody who's, who's going to give us that kind of interpretation. So we're giving you the best of what we've been able to collect and how we're moving forward with this. So it's, this is to offer some predictability and transparency as much as the CRTC can within the limit of their confidentiality obligations and while preserving officer discretion and it will enable them to be effective in the discharge of their enforcement mandate. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about who else involved in this, but CRTC is involved in the enforcement of CASEL. Industry Canada was involved in the development of the legislation. Um, and it's going to, we're going to talk about some of these other items as well. So there are uh, Competition Bureau, CRTC, uh, and Officer of the Privacy Commission uh, that are all impacted by this legislation that has come out of Industry Canada. This kind of gives you a breakdown. Um, so CRTC, is responsible for violations of the, uh, of the lo legislation, which includes sending of commercial electronic messages, alter transmission data in the course of a commercial activity without consent, and installing a computer program in the course of a commercial activity without any consent. So how many of you send out what you think might be a commercial electronic uh, message? Yeah, probably just about everybody, right? Are any of you altering transmission data or installing computer programs as part of a commercial activity? No? Okay, so we're not going <laughs> to do that part then because that's really not going to affect you. Now, the Competition Bureau uh, is impacted by this as well because they want, they're, they're going to be looking at false or misleading representations online which includes website and addresses. Uh, so, so for instance, um, a lot of times scammers will use something like a fake uh, PayPal address. There's only one person that can own PayPal, that URL, and that's PayPal. So if you look at the URL at the top, it might say PayPet. You know, they might have adjusted it by one letter or two the visual looks the same on the site, uh, but it's, it's obviously a misrepresentation. So this law will not allow people to do that anymore um, if they catch them. Um, and misleading representations on websites and so on, that's something that of course you as accredited businesses are familiar with because that's part of your accreditation. Uh, we go on to your websites and check and make sure that there's nothing on there that's going to create a problem for you with the Competition Bureau and we contact you if we feel that there is and let you know so that you can make any necessary changes. So, uh, And then finally the Privacy Commission, uh, we're all familiar with, the, with that, with p the PIPADA uh, rulings. Um, so that's going to be impacted by the collection and uses of personal addresses, information without consent, and the collection of personal information from uh, computer systems. So we know that there are companies out there <clears throat> that pay attention to where you're visiting when you're on the internet and what you're doing. So that's going to be monitored now and it, it could be uh, subject to fines. So there's really this tripartite, which is this re those three organizations that are working together. But it's primarily going to be the CRTC that we're going to be, we as business people are going to be concerned about because they're the ones that hold the hammer on this. Uh, so there is, on that fightspans.ca, there is a, a place there where people can go and they can let the CRTC know if they have found some kind of spam and they want to, them to know about it. So you can kind of see here, uh, they're, they're going to have complaints coming through on the website, they're going to have complaints coming through from OPC, they're going to have complaints coming through from the 
Competition Bureau. They all kind of get funneled through to the CRTC. The TRC, CRTC will look at them. They'll decide if there really is an issue there. And then they will decide what to do. Do we investigate? Do we send out a warning? Uh, do we try to educate this company? Uh, because maybe it's just a, a mistake that they've made. Uh, and then finally, they will decide on whether or not um, they can settle the issue, uh, come up with something that's going to work for both parties, or at, at the worst case scenario is that they will fine uh, the company or the individual. And these are significant penalties. So unlike a lot of the laws out there, um, this one has some bite in that you can see if they decide to hit you with an administrative monetary penalty, it can be anywhere from a million to ten million dollars. Now I don't know about your business, <laughs> but I know here that's, that's a significant amount of money. We, we would suffer as a result of a penalty like that. And the other thing is, is that they can also uh, go after the individual as well as the company. So you may have a policy around Castle, but if, you're, if you have a staff person who's not following that policy, you can be liable there as well. And there is uh, extended liability, including vicarious liability. So vicarious is, is that relationship that you as an employer have with your employees. It's almost a uh, family relationship. And then the, your director and office liability, uh, which certainly falls for those of us in the nonprofit sector, um, that we are responsible for our boards and officers as well. So basically, um, the CRTC sees their job as um, promoting compliance. So they are, you know, trying to communicate out to people uh, about what it is. Uh, it's been floating around for about three years, though, and it's kind of an indication when I ask at the beginning how many of you are familiar with it that there are opportunities here to, to educate further. And so that's why we felt we had a responsibility to our ABs to, to get some information to you about what, what's involved here. Uh, then they will investigate and then finally enforce, which is where you get those big amps, as they call them, amps. So what they want to do, how they're going to measure their success is that they've increased the compliance with the legislation, uh, changed our reputation as a spam haven. Um, although I, you know, I do wonder about that because when I researched the top 10 spam countries in the world, Canada was not in them. Uh, however, there obviously is that perception that we are somewhat of a spam haven and reduction in infected electronic devices and that's where we get into those that group that's doing computer programming and that kind of thing. Um, the, their indirect um, goals that they see is that we're going to have an impact on consumer loss uh, through spam, uh, that we're going to uh, be able to have some of the best practices uh, in, our, in our country when it comes to spam and how we look at it and how we legislate it. And ultimately they're hoping to see um, increased consumer confidence in the marketplace. So um, that's, uh, that's their goals. So now we get into the regulations uh, and talking about uh, the kind of the history of it. it came out in 2010. Then they were there were opportunities for people to weigh in on that in 2012, and uh, then reg final regulations made in 2013, and there have been updates as well in 2014. So we're going to kind of stick with the CEMs here um, because that's the ones that uh, affect all of us. So they have um, provided on the website a number of uh, publications that you can look at uh, and 
information. So as I said, we'll try to get on there. If not, I still I would recommend that you do go on at some point. So information that is to be included in a CEM. So they're saying if you uh, are sending out CEMs, any kind of electronic messaging uh, to customers, consumers, whatever, uh, you must make sure that you have your mailing address on it uh, and um, that <coughs> you're understanding that this is a valid um, email for the number of 60 Ds, which would... So here's, a, here's an unsubscribe mechanism and th these are on their site as well. So you can have an unsubscribe that differentiates between, this one does, it says, I, I want to uns unsubscribe from everything from your company, or I just want to unsubscribe from promotional messages. If you're texting out to people, you can also use a text just saying text stop to unsubscribe. Uh, another request for consent, this one has uh, everything broken down basically uh, for people who are sending out computer programming and that kind of thing. Again, doesn't apply to anyone in this room. And then toggling. I had to look this up, what, what the heck is toggling, but basically, <laughs> and, I, and try to find this particular definition was hard to find, but anyway, basically what they're saying is if you send out an email uh, or an opportunity for people to stop getting your stuff and you've already pre-checked the box, that's not, that's not right. They want you to send it out without the box. How many are getting a ton of these in there? Yeah, we, we all are, right? If it's already got the t it ticked for you, then uh, they're, they're not doing it right. Um, so then there's information about your personal and your family relationships. Uh, who qualifies as a family? Uh, what's a personal relationship? Uh, and you can't have a personal relationship. Basically what this boils down to, it's section six if you get looking at the legislation, but you, you can't have one as a business. Um, and it, it does spell it out. You know, this is considered your family. This is not considered your family. But you can't have personal relationships as a corporation or a business. Um, and it, it also discusses getting express consent versus implied consent. And we'll get into that a bit more. Uh, basically, implied consent is somebody that you've had a business relationship with prior to July of 2014, July 1 of 2014 and you have to be able to prove that you do have a relationship with that individual. It's a bit ambiguous and you have to be able to document it. So how are you documenting it? Now if you've got, if this person con signed a contract with you three months ago, obviously you have a business relationship uh, and that's pretty strong consent. Uh, and you keep a copy of that. Mm -hmm. Is there a time limit on that? Did you have a contract signed two years ago, six months ago? Uh, according to the legislation, it's uh, two years, within the last two years. However, there has to have been some activity in the past six months. So would some activity be if you contacted them via an email promotion and they didn't unsubscribe? <coughs> that could qualify as long as you've got a copy of it. And again, this comes down to can you document? Can you document? And, and that's really... If you've got it, that document and you can show that they have responded and that they're carrying on that relationship with you and you can prove it, um, then you're okay. But if you can't and they decide to take offense after July 1, 2014, they could say, well, you know, I, I don't know why I'm getting emails from these guys because I've had nothing to do with them in the last two years. One other question on that topic. Yeah. If we received a program that we liked, mm -hmm. we decided to forward it to our group of whoever's in our email subscriber list. And it was from the US where this doesn't apply. And it was automatically checked. Are we now considered in an offense here? 
my my best advice would be that yes, you would be because the consumer is in Canada. Yeah, that's what I was right. Saying. So and if it's pre-checked, yeah. So uh, and you're. I mean, we, when you get into these third-party relationships, it's 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 really difficult nice. because, like, if you're a member of the AMA, for instance, and because you're a member of the AMA, the AMA says to you, uh, "We're going to send you promotions from these other hotel chains and so on. Are you okay with that?" And you say, "Yes, I am," uh, and they're controlling that. Um, then when you stop being an AMA member, it's their responsibility to contact those other people and say, you can't keep contacting them. However, if they send you a list and you, uh, and you agree to you know, this, this and this and not that and not that, and you've now got a personal relationship or a business relationship now with those chains, it's you, when you cancel with AMA, you've only canceled with AMA. You've got to go and cancel with the other ones individually. It's better to send them a link and let them choose whether they want to go to that instead of sending them the details. If you're inviting them to, um, to participate in a business relationship with that company um, and you're the third party, uh, I would, I would, what I would do is I would make it very clear that this is between them and that company and that you are not, this is not endorsed by you, uh, you're not involved in this, there's no advantage, there's no business advantage to you in providing that service. Uh, but to really be on the safe side, I would ask your, if you can, if you've got constant contact or something like that, you're going to send the stuff out through constant contact where they can unsubscribe or send them at the time that they become involved with you, say, do, like my MA example, do you want to hear from other companies? Yes or no. And let them know they can unsubscribe at any time. And then send that information out through a system like Constant Contact where they can unsubscribe. So you make it clear to them it's their choice, one, and two, they can unsubscribe at any point, and then make sure they can unsubscribe. LinkedIn in a social media environment, how does this apply to that? It does, to stuff? It does <laughs> apply to social media, yeah. It, uh, social media is considered a, um, a part of this. It's an electronic message. So a phone call is not. So I have a, LinkedIn a fax got, is not, but social media is. I have a LinkedIn account that's got over 10 million followers. How do I stop this from that it automatically sends through my relationship. How do I control that? I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't. I mean, I have a LinkedIn, but it's not going. I mean, are you saying just because they come and read your your newsfeed, or? Well, I don't know. Like, I just know that stuff's on the move all the time, and I, I don't necessarily approve or disapprove of it, it's just I'm getting it, others are getting it, I don't understand that system, so. If you didn't initiate that connection though, if you didn't initiate the sending of that info to that other, to those other people, it's not your, it's, you have your hands off of it. Okay. Yeah, if so if somebody's just posting to your site? Them, then yeah. that's the thing, but if it's just automatically, you know, going through the vine, I don't okay. think there's any concern there. Yeah, so you're, you're not sen sending this out as a, as a recommendation to these people. That makes me feel better. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I, I see what you mean. Yeah, they're just posting on your site. That's that's what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, and there is on Facebook and Twitter and those kinds of things as well. But if you repost it or you retweet it or you, you know, uh, send it out to your followers, now now you're encouraging that. Okay. So I'll just send them all a note saying, I'm scared rabbit, you won't be hearing from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we talk about section 66, which is an updated uh, version. 
uh, because initially it said it was for 24 months and this is one of the ones that says that implied consent is good for a period of 36 months. Um, and again, going on about this existing business relationship, uh, during the transition period, and there is a transition period, there is, uh, so for the first uh, three years of this, until July 1 of 2017, uh, only CRTC uh, can administer or, or take any kind of um, action against somebody for not following this. Now, people can go on that fight spam site and send in information to the CRTC about things that they feel are spam and CRTC will decide whether or not it is. But after 2017, uh, July, 20, July 1st of 2017, uh, individuals may be able to uh, take action against you personally on, on this law. So, um, course. Sorry, I should have turned that off. Uh, if you're sending a CEM that is a response to a request, an inquiry, or a complaint requested by the person to whom the message is sent, according to Section 6 of the Castle, you don't have to meet the uh, requirements. However, uh, but you still have to have that unsubscribe mechanism. Uh, what we're doing, I can tell you right here, is that even if we get an inquiry uh, from somebody over the phone uh, for information about accreditation, mm -hmm. about some of the services that we have, we're still recording that information. Uh, we're, putting, we're putting it in writing and we're putting it in our um, database so that we can show that we did get consent. Again, being the scary cat that I am, uh, I'm doing that as well. Uh, it also says that if you're providing a quota or estimate for the supply of product, goods, or service, land, or interest, um, and that person uh, has uh, requested that, uh, then you do not have to meet the requirements of the CEM. So, if so you're off the hook, is basically kind of what it's saying. Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, for you, Specifically for you as an accredited business, a lot of you get requests a quote. You'll be able to respond to those without having prior consent because they sent you the request. And our database maintains that information. So it's backed up all the time and so it would always be on file that you received that request. Um, if the messaging service by its nature makes information required under Section 6 readily available to the recipient, then it would be redundant to require such information on each individual message. Um, this information must be readily available as part of the messaging service and not as part of the device used to access the message. And in such circumstances, messages sent may be exempt. This is what always <laughs> frustrates me is there's always the may, could, and, and so I do think it's better to be safe than sorry and make sure that you're just documenting everything that you possibly can. Some of you may have um, phone systems that even for um, phone calls or you can store that information in your database. Um, we don't have that but uh, some of you may. So any of these kinds of things um, are, are going to help you. So because there's always the maze, or coulds, or might be's uh, in, this, uh, in this legislation. And this is directly from CRTC. And then if you're sending things to a limited, secure, and confidential account. So um, that would be things like financial services and online banking sites. And here you get this, some CEMs are sent from Canada to a foreign country. Uh, the foreign country must be listed in Schedule 1 to the le legislation regulations. So again, you'll have to go and look at this to see, and it is available on the site, um, to see who has their own anti-spam. 
Uh, California, for instance, has an extremely strong, almost as strong as our uh, legislation. So you want to make sure that you're following what their uh, legislation is. And then if any of you are a registered charity, you're exempt. And if any of you are politicians in the room, you're exempt. So there's robocalls calls and emails you get from all of them. You'll still get them. <laughs> just charities. Unfortunately, I wish it was nonprofits because we're not profit and but yeah, it does apply to us. They make it very clear that it does apply to nonprofits. Uh, and then they go into all the reasons why the politicians are not part of it. Uh, and then this is one, third party referrals, and this affects us certainly, um, and probably some of you. So it says consent's not required to be sent on the first message if there's a referral. So if one of you were to say, you know, I, I know a really good business and it's my friend or whatever and I'd really like you guys to approach them for accreditation, we can send them a message provided <laughs> uh, we, um, we can prove that you already have an existing business relationship with them. So again, to be on the safe side, we'd probably ask you, how well do you know them? We'd be putting it in journal that on such and such a date at such and such a time, you gave us permission to contact this person. But it's not considered a CEM. So, um, and then we have to have the full name of, of the person who gave us that referral uh, and a statement that this, this message is sent as a result. So we would send the email or make the phone call or the, reach out to that person saying, so-and-so of such and such a company has told us that they have a relationship with you and to send you some information on this and this is why we're doing it. So uh, this is one thing of where we get into that social media. So there you go. The mere use of buttons available on social media websites, such as clicking like on Facebook, voting for or against a link or a post on Reddit, um, accepting someone as a friend on Facebook, clicking to follow someone on Twitter doesn't constitute a personal relationship. And this gets into all the computer programs, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to just get out of here. Just watching my time here because I don't want to keep you too long. So we're right at the 1230 mark. So I'm going to try to wrap it up in the next five minutes or so and then uh, take any questions. So under the Act, as I said, this is kind of a repeat, this uh, Bill C-28, or commonly now known as CASEL. Uh, it uh, affects the commercial electronic messaging, uh, the transmission data, and the computer programs on another person's computer. So a commercial electronic message is any electronic message that encourages participation in a commercial activity, regardless of whether or not there's an expectation of profit. So that covers pretty much, for most of us, pretty much everything we send. Uh, it's been said that this is the strongest in the world. Um, and they are, I think this is encouraging, the fact that they are making changes as they're going on because they realize that it's just too broad and that most of us are struggling trying to, to understand exactly what they mean and even in conversation they're not you know they're struggling they're struggling with clarifying it for us themselves so um, I think that's encouraging another thing that's encouraging is that throughout the legislation if you read it over and over again they say they are this was not designed to keep us from doing business it's just designed to help us do business better So um, 
we've been trying to get Industry Canada to provide us with some extra information, um, and and they have. Uh, but again, there's a lot of cans and maybes and could and depends and so on. So, uh, so we've started by identifying all of our endpoints. Uh, uh, services. So where's, where's all our information coming in uh, that we get email addresses from? Because it does specify uh, that if an email is, is publicly, um, is, a, is available to the public. So if I have a website, well I do have a website, the BBB website. So my email is there. So if you wanted to email me, uh, I have not put anything on there saying that you cannot email me. If I did, if I said I will not accept, my email is posted here, but I will not accept any uh, CEMs, then you can't. But unless that's on there, it's assumed that I've, get, I've, I've given consent to be contacted. So the same for you and the same for your customers. So. A, the question came up the other day though, you know, there's a lot of websites out there, like if I Google my name, my name comes up on all kinds of places, that I did not give permission for them to have my email address. So you should really go to the website, because that the company has control of, and use that. Uh, business cards. Business cards, again, are a little bit tricky. If I give you my business card and say, please send me some information, you can record that somewhere in your database on such and such a date, you gave me the business card to do this, or refer to it in the email. As per yesterday, when you gave me your, email, your business card, I'm sending the information you requested. You know, you've got proof in that email. Uh, so again, document, document, document is really important. If you found that, uh, found my business card on the bar room floor somewhere and I accidentally dropped it, uh, you might have a hard time proving that I wanted you to send me some information. So, uh, we've also identified all our output sources. So if you go on our uh, website right now, you'll see that there's a lot of opportunities to opt in. Do you want information on this? Please click here. Do you want information on that? And we're encouraging our staff to say, okay, if somebody contacts you and you want to be 100% sure, have them go to the website and click the opt-in. Um, you'll notice some are, are doing the opt-outs. Um, Can I just get another odd question sure. on this? I was at a seminar not too long ago and a bunch of participants gave me their business cards and said, this is my permission to be in your mailing list. Mm -hmm. I just put them on a piece of paper, photocopied it, wrote the date, and stamped it. If I did not send them an email right away to say this is to verify, am I now needing to do that again? Or like, is that secure enough just to have photocopied and said this was the date? For Depends on, on the timing of when they gave that to you. Was it like last week? Cause oh yeah last, well, yeah, last week could probably be that's fine. that's sufficient enough evidence that I yeah. just made a photocopy and said as of this date? Yeah. Okay, because I haven't had time to email them. Yeah, yeah. No, it should be, you should be, you should be good because it's within the last two years or the last 36 months if you've got an implied consent. You've pretty much got an express consent. Here's my, here's my uh, agreement to let you contact me. And um, so th I would say that's actually even better than implied. It's, it's an express. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of... So we've identified in our database which contacts have implied consent and which ones have expressed consent. Uh, so, and I know that's a big job because everybody's got huge databases, um, but uh, it's, it's an ongoing project uh, to make sure that we are recording all that information. And we do have that window till 2017 to really make sure that we've done everything, but I mean we're, we're moving as fast as we can on going through and making sure and, um, and deciding. And, and, and you know, for, for big companies, that's where you're getting a lot of these emails. Um, you know, they, they, have the, they have the 
deep pockets to be able to send out those mass emails through constant contact or something like that and record all that information. For smaller organizations like ours and perhaps some of yours, um, that's a bit daunting. So we, we're doing the best that we can uh, to, to secure it. And, and of course, in the case of our relationship with you as accredited businesses, I mean, we have contracts and, um, uh, and so on that uh, would be considered express consent. So you are part of our membership. So. Uh, I would read. The, I would. I, I. I. don't know your particular situation for your nonprofit, so I would go to the legislation and really read through that. Okay, so um, scour it. Make sure you understand it, and and how it applies to you. Um, confirm any unknowns by July one. Working on that and document, document, document. I just can't say it enough. Uh, identify the date of consent for each contact. So we've actually got this put into our, our database now um, so that we can, you know, click it off inside the database. This is the kind of consent we have. This is the date that we got it on. Uh, if you can't do that, you know, at this point, I would just start doing that in your database wherever you can. Um, identifying the IP addresses where the consent came from. Uh, that's not a huge concern for us because we deal with you guys and your accredited businesses and you've gone through that process of accreditation so we've already checked all of that out as part of that and then every year when you go to renew we, we check again so that's that's something that's kind of built into our process but it could be something that would impact you so is and really what that guarantees you is that you're really dealing with uh, with PayPal and not PayPet uh, for the example I used before, um, so it will uh, it will help you at the in, at the end of the day, uh, because as we all know, with electronic messaging, we don't really know who's at the other end of that computer. And then uh, seeking your own legal counsel regarding your vulnerabilities with the legislation, and if you really uh, think, uh, you know. I've read the legislation, I've gone to the website, I've, you know, I've asked my questions and I'm still not comfortable, I would definitely encourage you to, to reach out to legal counsel and, uh, and get their support. Um, and then the uh, 36 months now as opposed to the 24 months. The other thing that we did uh, was to increase our liability insurance. Uh, it won't cover the fine itself but it does cover the, because um, there is no insurance that will cover fines. Uh, if you break the law, you're kind of on, the own, on your own. Uh, but I did increase it in, t in terms of uh, possible, uh, you know, legal counsel being required on our part to deal with anything that comes through. Um, here's the site uh, to fight spam. You don't need to put that whole long thing in if you just put the HTTP uh, colon backslash, back, backslash fightspam.gc.ca or just put in fight, fight spam, you know, Canada, it, it, it's going to pop up. Um, these are some other uh, things also these all came right off the site so again there are, and another thing that you can do when you're on that site is you can sign up for updates so they actually you can input your email address and they will keep you up to date and I think there will be updates so I'm just saying fight spam don't fight castle um, because you can't. <laughs> it's, it's something we're going to have to live with. I, I think until it actually hits and we, ro and, and we see the impact of it um, and we see changes as, as companies are trying to struggle with this, um, especially the smaller organizations, um, we will see changes. I, I don't think, and this is just my personal opinion, so uh, that's what you're dealing with, 
I don't think it's meant to target businesses that are trying to do this well. You know, I think we're, we're all doing our best effort to follow the legislation to the best of our ability, the best of our understanding. And I think, um, like any of these uh, government, um, or any of these laws, I mean, when they, come, when they come to you and there's been an infraction, what they're really looking for is, are you repeatedly doing things over and over again that are directly uh, contravening the law? Uh, the other thing I would suggest that you do and that we've done is that we put down our policies around Castle. We are, we've met with our staff, we've said here's our expectation of you, this is our policy, this is how we're going to follow it. Uh, and again, if somebody goes off the rails on you and is kind of doing their own thing, I mean that's, you have it written down that this is your policy. Uh, this person went against the policy, and you'll deal with that. Should that be on the website, like the privacy policy? That's something that should be on privacy the policy should definitely be on there. Should but I mean, I just mean our castle policy for our staff. Right. This is for our staff um, as to, because really it's an internal policy, right? And how they are going to handle phone calls and how they're going to handle their email and how they're going to record things. So having a written policy around that and, and an education system around that for your employees and as you bring in new employees, <laughs> you know, make sure that you're um, doing that. We've also done, I can tell you, uh, like you guys have taken a step today. You may be thinking, wow, this is like happening next week and I'm not ready. Uh, but we did a, a press release on this a month ago and we had one reporter contact us on it. Just one. So it's really not on people's radar. Um, so you guys have taken a huge step today in, in coming forward. And <laughs> again, again, I think, um, you know, we, when we did talk to CRTC directly in Industry Canada, I mean, they made it, you know, as clear as they can uh, to say that there are you know, it will start here. It's not going to start with, uh, here's a million dollars, <laughs> you know, and, and you're, you're now being fined. Uh, because, and it, that's why I showed you that slide as well, where, where they start with investigation, education, those kinds of things, uh, and try to resolve it. The same way, you know, that we resolve complaints. It's like, you know, it's like, let's try to find the solution first. Um, I mean, how many of you have dealt with occupational health and safety? Any of you? I mean, I haven't with this particular job, but I have worked at some high, managed some high risk workplaces, and it's the same thing. They really aren't out there to lay big fines. They're out there to make sure that you have a safe working environment for people. And again, if you have a, a safety policy and somebody's off that policy, you know, you go back to your policy, that's, that's not what we do. So in some ways I feel that, you know, this law is probably not going to be a whole lot different than that. Uh, they would probably contact you initially and say, hey, we've had a complaint. Uh, you're doing things this way and you should do it that way. Okay, you may say, well, that's not our policy, here's our policy. Or you may say, oh, okay, we were doing the best we could. Uh, and we uh, didn't realize or we didn't interpret it properly. I've given you some really good handouts that I found to be helpful. Uh, one is that um, checklist on Bill C-28 and, um, and the uh, survival guide, uh, which is actually, uh, unlike the legislation, is actually very easy to read and a little funny in places and, uh, and it's, a good, it's, it's a good piece to have and they break it down quite well. So, um, but again, I would definitely, if you possibly can, uh, if you do nothing else in the next few days, please go on there and, um, and check it out because... Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. So on our website, we have a, a sign-up section so you can sign up and get the newsletter or sign up. Yeah. Put a disclaimer on there and say, um, 
by you entering your email address here that is you providing your consent. Is that disclaimer enough? Yeah, uh, if you want some, some good language about that, I, I would suggest going to our website because we've got some opt-in um, uh, and, and I don't, I don't do, do that part of it, but our marketing and uh, communications VP uh, <coughs> developed that and we're actually using that all across Canada, that same language. Okay. Uh, so feel free to, to go and have a look at that. And it's very clear and when you, when you click on it, uh, you know, that comes into our database and, and, then, and we are storing that information as well. Yeah. Okay, so I have a few hopefully quick yes or no questions here just to clarify. So um, you were saying that if someone, like for in my business, I build my team and someone signs their contract, it has electronic disclosure or whatever, or in the terms and conditions that they can read, it says in there that you, it's a, you're giving implied consent that you're going to be getting express, emails from us express. or express it. That would be say? express at that okay. point, yeah. Um, so they, uh, they, okay, so that's good. Now, calls, you said don't count as, like phone calls do not count as? They're not electronic message, that's okay. right. Okay, so if I'm calling someone that's a lead from a show. Yeah, you, ca you can call anybody that you want. It's whenever they say, yeah, I'm really interested, can you send me something? Yeah. Okay, or yeah. something, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can fax too, which is also interesting. Which is, you get a lot of spam it's not fax. Is electronic then, on the fax? No. Oh, interesting. I know, I thought that was interesting. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to be moving. Sorry. Um, and now, let's say you have someone fill something out that says, and check, because on my forms now I have them fill out their complete information, and there's a little spot that says, I give permission for you to contact me by email, and they can check it. Yes, yes. no? What if they come back and say, I didn't fill anything out, what are you talking about? Then what do you have to, do you, I mean, maybe you don't know the answer to that, but. I, 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 that's, that's where you, it, if, tricky, if right? they came back and they actually, uh, you know, if CRTC would have to make that decision, they would have to make that call that, yeah, we think you're making it up. Uh, and um, that's and that's might stuff. be yeah, and that might be where legal count. But, I mean, it's stuff like that where it becomes a he said, she said. That that's why I've raised my liability because that's where you might need a lawyer to step in on your behalf. Uh, but you know, that's the best that you can can provide, right? So uh, last question: uh, Is there a phone number on that website that you can call if you're not sure and have questions? Because there's the that's probably these nitty gritty things where you want to get clarification. There is a contact us there and, okay. and um, or email those, yeah. <laughs> you email them or whatever. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just uh, don't be surprised if you get might, maybe, could be. It doesn't sound like it's going to be for the really, like the small people like me. Like I'm not sending mass, mass emails, but it's still good to be, I guess. I think, yes, exactly. It's best to be prepared for it and uh, to have things in place and to do the best you can to document. Yeah. And I would just say, when you say it's part of your contract, um, <coughs> the, yeah, it's, I would just make sure that it's very well defined in there and that, uh, because you don't want, because maybe, uh, like you might even want to give a separate checkbox for that particular section. Yeah, uh, that's not because otherwise it may be assumed. It could be assumed that well, I thought I was signing to get whatever the product or service. I didn't know I was signing that you could use. You could email. To get in touch with the bigger company and say you guys in the states need to know what's going on in Canada. Yes. And make sure they're aware. Yes, and uh, and and it's, uh, some of them surprisingly are aware. Okay, so well, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Yes. So we have the applicant tracking system, so people apply for jobs through our website. It's kind of the same maybe as you were asking. Um, if they apply for a job, they have to accept the disclaimer, the privacy disclaimer. Yep. Could it be included in? Yeah, 
The op it could, and, I th and they actually do recommend, it is one of the recommendations uh, in the legislation, I believe, I can't remember which section, but if you can, can tie up your privacy policy along with that disclaimer, it's actually a very good thing. Okay. Yeah. And so each time, so if they were to send a job to a friend, like refer it through an email, if they wanted to send it to another friend, at what, should it be in the body, So, that, so let me see if I understand. So I could go onto your website and I go, oh, this is a great job for my son. I'm going to send it to him. But I'm sending it to him, not you. Okay, so even though we have that feature on our site, it's, at that point it's the sender sending it to a friend. So oh, you're, oh, I see. It's a feature, it's a feature on your feature. site. Yeah. I still Sandra. think it, I, I still think you could make that argument that, but if you wanted to be a hundred percent sure, that's one where I'd call the lawyer, and say, what do you think? Should we change this? The lawyers are doing quite well in this. I think. <laughs> this is going to be very muddy. <laughs> <laughs> it is muddy, and I, and I, you know, I wish I could give you really a hundred percent, but. Uh, well, you're still learning too. I am. I am, and. Uh, and, it's, and, and honestly, to, to, we, we wanted to get this information out to try to find somebody who really wants to stand up here <laughs> and do what I'm doing today. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So finally I said, you know what, I'll go do it because... Well, you've done a great job, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I hope you. I hope you feel like you've come out with something. It raises awareness at least yeah. to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. And At least we know it's not our imagination that we need to be panicking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I say, I, I, I cling to that piece that it's not to stop us from doing business. And also, I really don't feel like, you know, BBB is a target or our accredited businesses are a target for this. Uh, I mean, you guys stand for trust. Uh, you, you go through a process uh, to become accredited and, and you go through it year after year. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're, we're not really the people that they're targeting. We're not in, the, in their sites for this. But the fact that anybody can, can, can come and, uh, you know, make a claim uh, is, is the reason why you really need to be extra careful because you don't know where this might come from. And then, uh, and then CRTC will have to make that call as to whether or not that's legitimate. Yes. In a typical situation, we'll have a few clients come in every day, yep. look at product, we'll work out a uh, price scenario and email it to them. Do we need to be covered there? Do we need their permission to send them that email with that code on? It's or a quote? Is it, is it a quote? Yeah. If it's a quote and you say in it, as per your visit in our office today, because it does, it, there was one slide on there where it was talking about quotes. Uh, again, I would put that in the body of that email. Uh, you know, as per our conversation today at two o'clock, uh, you requested that we send you a quote on the following items. As per your selection. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, that would be my understanding. Yeah. Um, maybe you already went over this, and it's a lot of information, so <laughs> it's like <laughs> fell out. But if on with constant contact they have the unsubscribe yes. you know whatever safe unsubscribe so it is not explicit consent if they if they haven't because they have the option to check that right and if they don't check it and then they complain that's they have no legs to stand on because they've been given the option out or is yeah the the thing with <laughs> the unsubscribe really is what you're doing is this is even though you may have express or ex or implied consent, uh, the legislation points out that people should be able to unsubscribe at any time. And that's the message that you're sending by going through constant contact, for instance, is I have implied or I have express consent, uh, but as, you know, I'm, I'm now standing for the rest of the rule, which is you have the right to unsubscribe. So even though you've given me consent, in the past to receive this, you've changed your mind. 
and you can change your mind at any time. And if they've never really given you specific consent to say, yep, please send me your monthly newsletter or whatever in the past, but they've never unsubscribed in the years they've had it. And then you should have some kind of record of that. Can you prove that the onus is still back on you to prove that you had an implied consent? Okay. So if you can't, then you're better off to request it. Or get them out of your list. Yeah. Okay. And remember, <laughs> you have that 36 months in there. But um, that's, and again, that's why these big companies are sending out these mass emails through, through things like Constant Contact saying, Tell us if you're gonna if we can keep contacting you. And you need an email, something written down, or a letter that says from that person, yes, I am okay with receiving these emails. Yeah, and you could okay. send out and you you could actually do that through constant contact, uh, especially if you do it before July one, just saying you know uh, this this is our instead of our regular newsletter, I'm sending you this right now uh, to. Uh, Make sure that you're happy with, you know, receiving further newsletters. Uh, please unsubscribe below if you're not. And then you can use that as your proof that, you know, I sent this out June 25th, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I only had three people unsubscribe. So the rest are giving you. Yeah, you put that in the body of your okay. of, of your constant contact. Yes. I was just curious how, how um, much the public are being made aware of this because I'm just curious how many people are going to be immediately trying to send in complaints. You know, like we're going to do our part to cover ourselves. Yeah. But do you have any idea, you know, like how much we're going to see? I only have what I see, empirical, yeah. and, and I don't think a lot of people know about it. And I know that when we met with CRTC and Industry Canada, they said they were doing all of these presentations and and you know getting the information out and I said well you know like across Canada you know just with our accredited businesses you would have access to about 30,000 businesses have you considered just doing something for accredited businesses oh we couldn't possibly deal with a group that big so again <laughs> it's like well I so I, I think it's relatively small organizations that they've been doing and I, I'm only guessing and I can only say that truthfully that's what we were told so uh, that's why we're trying to get the information out and as I said when we did a press release only one reporter picked up on it uh, often when we do a press release we'll have five or six uh, people approach us, you know, to, to mm -hmm. do TV, radio, whatever, and uh, so that was a really small <laughs> turnaround. Uh, and uh, I know even when I brought it up with our board, uh, people were kind of, you know, didn't know what I was talking about. So the very first time. So, so I think that um, you know, unless there's going to be a big push in the media after July one. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many of you know somebody who knows some knows anything about it? I know you want to continue subscribing. That and the last two weeks. Yes, and that's probably the biggest thing, and that's only been happening in the last couple of weeks. You know, so I mean, it's not even big big corporations have not been acting on this until until the last minute. So I'm I'm just thinking. I know. Um, it is now 1 o'clock, uh, so I've, I've used up my time, but if any of you, I'm certainly available if you want to ask me some questions afterwards, but I don't want to keep everybody here when you need I to. I just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, I appreciate it.